some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in Michigan with the uh, soft hard known as Eric Martin. As he is in trouble for some domestic battery issues or something like that. And, uh, well, he's still up to his same old... Uh, soft hard BS about jurisdiction and everything like that but it doesn't exactly fly with the judge in this particular scenario and he gets shut down so without further ado let's go ahead and get this freaking S show on the road shall we got it alright you're all set sir thank you alright you're right buddy Next will be Mr. Martin. All right. This is two four two four four eight. The People versus Eric Martin. Jeff Panto on behalf of Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin requests that the. Uh, charges be read, um, and he is not entering a plea of any nature uh, to this matter. He's asking the court to dismiss this matter for lack of subject matter jurisdiction. How many times have you tried this subject matter jurisdiction argument on a judge, and it actually worked? Because I've seen a couple dozen of your uh, court cases, and not once has it ever worked. And in this case, it's really going to come back to bite you in the ass when the judge actually answers your question on this particular subject. So, oh, blow it out your ass, Howard. And for a violation of his due process rights. Okay. Uh, good, good afternoon. Mr. Martin, the allegation against you in this misdemeanor warrant, it alleges on October 5th of 2024 in the city of Taylor, Michigan, that the complaining witness has filed a sworn complaint in this court stating that on the date and location described, the defendant, contrary to law, count one, domestic violence, did make an assault or an assault and battery upon Kurt Joseph Martin, a resident or former resident of his household, contrary to MCL 750.81 parent two. This is a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and or a fine of $500. You know, this isn't the first time that I've heard about you uh, getting this kind of charge, uh, Eric. So it kind of makes me wonder if... Uh, this uh, whole idea of you being a quote-unquote 30-year constitutional law scholar is a bunch of BS to begin with because you just can't stay out of getting in trouble with the law. So which leads me to believe that this whole law scholar thing is just a bluff to try to keep people away from you. That way you can commit all the crimes you want to. That and the fact that you don't believe in the law to begin with. A consecutive sentence may be imposed under MCL 750-506A if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. Mr. Martin, I've um, signed an order uh, appointing counsel to you. Mr. Martin, did you go over your constitutional rights? We went. All right. Uh, discussion. But he uh, would not uh, permit me uh, to sign the form. All right, Mr. Martin, if you require accommodations to use the court because of disabilities, or if you require a foreign language interpreter to help you fully participate in court proceedings, please contact the court immediately to make arrangements. You have been brought to court on a misdemeanor charge, and you have the following basic rights to plead guilty or not guilty or to stand mute. If you stand mute, a plea of not guilty will be entered. You may plead no contest with the permission of the court. You have a right to a trial by jury and to have the assistance of an attorney. You have the right to an attorney appointed at public expense if you are indigent, without money to hire an attorney, and if the offense charge requires a minimum jail sentence. Sir, the charge against you does not have a minimum jail sentence, or the court determines that it might sentence you to jail. 
I have appointed an attorney for you. You have the right to a trial, and at that trial, you have the following rights. To call witnesses to speak for you at trial, and you can get an order signed by the court to require witnesses to come to court. You have a right to see, hear, and question all witnesses against you at trial. You have a right to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent. If you choose not to be a witness on your own behalf, the prosecuting official could not comment on your refusal to testify. You also have the right to be presumed innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. If you plead guilty or no contest and your plea is accepted, you will not have a trial of any kind and you will give up the rights listed in items three and five above. You have the right to be released on bond. If you are now on probation or parole and you enter a plea of guilty or no contest or a finding of guilt is made by a judge or jury, it may result in a violation of your probation or parole. You can be sentenced to fines and jail plus costs. The court will tell you on the record the name of the offense, which I've done, um, the mandatory minimum jail, there is none, and if any, and the maximum possible penalty for the offense, which I have done. Fines and costs and other financial obligations imposed by the court must be paid at the time of assessment, except when the court allows otherwise for good cause shown. If you are not able to pay due to financial hardship, contact the court immediately to request a payment alternative under MCR 6. 425, parent D, parent three. An appeal to circuit court may be taken within 21 days from the date of sentence or as permitted pursuant to MCR 6.625, parent B. If the sentence includes incarceration and you wish to file an appeal but are financially unable to retain a lawyer, the court will appoint a lawyer to represent you on appeal if the, lawyer, if the request for a lawyer is made within 14 days of the date of sentencing. Federal law and or state law may prohibit you from possessing or purchasing ammunition or a firearm, including a rifle, pistol, or revolver. If you are convicted of a misdemeanor crime of violence and you are a current or former spouse, parent, or guardian of the victim, you share a child in common with the victim, you are or were cohabitating with the victim as a spouse, parent, or guardian, or you are or were involved with the victim in another similar relationship. <laughs> the court does have subject matter jurisdiction in this case, so that request is denied. <laughs> For everything, Mr. Fanto. Yes, sir. And um, since your client is selecting, Mr. Martin is selecting to remain silent, I will enter a plea of not guilty on his behalf. Gotcha, bitch. His bond is to be set at, I see he has, at least the jail records are indicating he has a $25,000 hold out of Brighton. That's, that's actually, that's, it's, it's MSP Brighton, but it's um, the jurisdiction is Ypsilanti. Uh, it's a driving while license suspended. Um, I can only guess that that's a typo. There's no felony attached to it. It's not like a driving while license suspended with injury or anything of that nature. I, I have to believe that's a typo. All right. Well, the jail will call Br MSP Brighton and they'll they'll clear that up. But, <laughs> sir, I'm going to give you a personal bond. I'm, I'm going to give. I'm going, Mr. Martin. I'm sorry. I said that is an illegal warrant. I was at jury selection on this day when Earl Washington says. All right. All right. One second. Mr. Martin, Mr. Martin, you have a constant. Listen to me. I'm trying to protect your rights, sir. You have a constitutional right to remain silent. For somebody who claims that they're a 30 year law scholar or something like that, you are surely a dumbass when it comes to understanding uh, procedures and everything like that. Don't incriminate yourself on another case by trying to argue the merits of said case on a different case, which is what you're trying to do right now. It's foolish to do so. But you know what they say, a man who represents himself in a court of law has a fool for a client. And, uh, well, Eric Martin is one of the biggest damn fools that you could ever see in a courtroom. I don't know anything about that case, and I don't want you to make any statements on the record that might affect your rights. Because no, yeah, anything you say in here can be used against right, you. What I got to say. Okay. I would exercise my First Amendment right freedom of speech. And to still defend myself for these charges you guys are making fraudulent presumptions off. First of all, the warrant's not legitimate, it's not legal, it's not lawful. I was there at the jury trial. If you guys look at that, you'll see it's fact. 
And just because I didn't say I was a, a legal fiction corporate entity defendant named Eric Martin, which I'm not, I'm a living man, one of the sovereign people. Uh, so because I didn't admit that fraudulent thing on, and commit perjury, she said, okay, I'm going to do a warrant for Eric Martin, the defendant. Ah, let me catch you guys up on what just happened here with this soft heart moron. And this is mainly for those who don't know the M.O. of a lot of sovereign citizens that uh, tr attempt this trick and completely fall flat on their face. You see, Eric was actually at that trial, but here's the thing. When he was asked to uh, let everybody know that he was there, he did that I'm not a corporate fiction kind of thing, that I am representing the, uh, the corporate fiction that is Eric Martin. That is usually interpreted by a lot of judges as saying, that you are not that person, that you are representing that person. Therefore, uh, it ends up with a warrant being issued for their arrest so they can be dragged into court. So the warrant is legal. He was there, but he tried the trick and it really backfired on him. So that's what this is about. So it's unlawful, it's illegal. It's oh, okay. Not all right. Well, Mr. Martin, I went to law school and practiced law for 20 years, and it's not. So listen. On this case, you have a... I'm going to mute you so you can hear what I'm saying to you, Mr. Martin, because it's important. You have a $2,500 personal bond. You are to appear in court as directed. You're not to leave the state without permission of the court. You're not to commit any new crimes while released. You're to immediately notify the court of change of address or phone number. You can have no contact while Kurt, with Kurt Martin while this case is pending. You cannot purchase or consume alcohol or illegal drugs, and you cannot possess or have access to firearms. We will send you notice of your next court date, sir, to you in the mail. And Brighton, I don't know if they'll come and get you or not, um, but that's for them to decide. But I'm letting you know those are your bond conditions today. Judge, he, he may need an officer assist from Can I see that one more time? I'm sorry. Thanks. All right. Uh, uh, you have uh, one time uh, allowed to the, uh, visit the premises to obtain your personal belongings accompanied by a police officer on one occasion, sir. Um, but if the complaining witness in this case, Kurt Martin, lives at that house on Clipper, you cannot return to 9074 Clipper while this case is pending. And you do have an exception. You're allowed one visit to the premises to obtain your personal belongings, with, uh, but you must be accompanied by a police officer. Thank you. Thank you. So this was really an epic fail on the part of Eric Martin once again, as he admitted that he uh, was playing that uh, soft hard trick of corporate versus living self, which ended up getting him that arrest warrant in that trial. Therefore, it is a legal warrant. The soft hard played games and, well, ended up losing that round with the judge because the judge didn't play. And in this particular case, the judge did not play with Eric Martin at all. So bravo, judge, bravo for pointing out his bullshit and reining him in. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. This could be some groundbreaking stuff right here. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?